In this session, we're going to be learning how to read a range of scales, all related to the idea of mass. Some of these scales, though, are going to have missing intervals, so we're going to have to look at the different strategies that we can use to identify what those intervals mean. So let's open up the textbook and investigate our first problem, which we can see is going to relate to Lewis and something to do with the clay that he's obviously measuring out in order to make some form of sculpture. So for question 1a, we're asked how can we work out what each interval on these scales represents? And before attempting to answer that question, we've got to think about what we mean by the term scales and what we mean by the term interval. And we can see that those two things, the scales are the things that the clay is being sat upon, and the interval, when we look at it, we can see that there's numbers going around. The interval are all those lines on those scales that tell us the different mass. So using that knowledge, how can you work out what each of the intervals on each scale represents? And for question 1b, we're being asked to apply that knowledge and that understanding that we have of what the each interval interval represents to help us to actually identify the mass of each piece of clay. So think about the different methods you can use and also think about how you can check that your answer is correct. So now it's time to answer both those questions. So question 1a, how can you work out what each interval on those scales represents? And question 1b, what is the mass of each piece of clay? So pause the video now, go and work those out and then come back so we can look at the different methods and strategies that you've used. So let's take a closer look at question 1a. How can you work out what each interval represents? Well, we know that these three machines are scales. The numbers that go around are the scales that you normally read, so they will tell you some information that you didn't know previously. The intervals, well, they're the little lines that come on those scales. So, for example, we can see on the far left scale, we go from 0 grams to 75 grams, and each of those lines represents something. The middle one, 0 grams to 140 grams, and again, each line represents something. And on our final one, the far right one, from 0 grams to 1 kilogram. So our first thing is to start thinking about how we can actually identify what each of those little lines represents. So let's begin with the very first one. This goes from 0 grams all the way to 75 grams, and they have intervals in between. Each one of those intervals is worth exactly the same amount. So what I've done here is I've stretched it out, rather than being in a circle, I've placed it into a horizontal line, and I've gone from the first interval, that's labelled 0 grams, to the next interval that's labelled 25 grams, and marked out each of the ones in between. And now my task is going to be to identify which each of those lines between 0 and 25 grams represents. And to work out what each interval represents, I'm going to use these steps. I'm going to find the difference between these two marked amounts. So in this case, 0 to 25 gives me 25. I'm then going to count the number of intervals. In this case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 intervals. And then I'm going to divide the difference by this number. So I have a difference of 25, and I'm going to divide it by 5 which is going to tell me that each one of these is worth 5. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double check that that's correct, because what I'm going to be able to do now is count from 0 to 25 in 5s, and make sure that by the time I get to 25, I've counted exactly the right amount of intervals that are between these two numbers. So I've gone from 0 grams to 5 grams, then to 10 grams, and to 15 grams, and then to 20 grams before I finish with 25 grams. So each interval, each of those little lines on this scale, is worth 5 grams. Let's move on to the next. And again, I'm going to follow that same strategy for this one. So I've, I've got to find the difference between two marked amounts. So in this case, I've used 120 grams and 140 grams. I'm then going to count the number of intervals. In this case, 1, 2. So there's two jumps from 120 to 140. I'm then going to divide the difference by this number. So the difference between 120 grams and 140 grams is 20, 
and I'm going to divide it by the number of intervals 2. So 20 divided by 2 gives me an answer of 10. So now I should be counting up for each interval in tens. So in this case I should be going from 120 grams to 130 grams and then 140 grams. So as you can see from this, it works. Each of those intervals is worth 10 grams. So let's move on to our final one. And for our final one, I've turned my circular scale into a horizontal scale. I've marked off my 500 grams to my 750 grams. So one name marked one to another marked one. I mean, I've placed those intervals that are unlabeled in between them. And now I'm going to follow those steps again. So I'm going to find the difference between these two marked amounts. So the difference between 500 and 750, I can count on from 500, or I can subtract 500 from 750. Either way, it's going to give me 250. I'm going to count the number of intervals that I'm using. So in this case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I'm going to divide that difference by the number of intervals. So 250 divided by 5. So I'm going to use my no number facts for this. So I'm going to work out that 5 can fit into 25 five times. So 5 will fit into 250 50 times. So each one of these intervals is going to be 50 grams. So let's see if I'm right by counting on in 50s from 500 and see whether I end up at 750. So now I've placed on 550 grams. My next one, hopefully if I'm working out this one correctly, I'll add on another 50 grams to give me 600 grams. And then I'm going to add on another 50 grams to give me 650 grams. And then adding on another 50 grams to give me 700 grams. And then finally another 50 grams for 750 grams. So how can I work out each, what each interval represents? Well, I've found two labelled intervals next to each other. I've found the difference between those two marked amounts. I then counted the number of unlabeled intervals between them. And then I've divided the difference between the two no numbers I know by the amount of intervals in between them to identify the value of each interval. And in this case, the intervals are worth 50 grams each. So now I know the value of each interval on each of those three scales, I can start looking at question 1b. What is the mass of each piece of clay? And once again, I've taken my circular scale and made it into a horizontal line. And I've labelled the same place on my horizontal scale as the circular scale. So you can see that labelled by the red arrow on the circular scale and the blue arrow on my horizontal. Now what I can do is I can apply that knowledge that I previously had of what each interval is worth. And for this one, each interval is worth 5 grams. And that shows me that this clay must have a mass of 20 grams. I've done exactly the same with the second scale. I've simply taken it from the circular scale to a horizontal line. I've highlighted where the scale is pointed to. And then I'm going to apply my knowledge of what each interval is worth, in this case 10 grams, to calculate that this piece of clay is 130 grams. And for my final scales, I've again made it into a horizontal line. I've labelled my 500 grams and my 750 grams, which are the two la named labels that are either side of the arrow on that scale. I've labelled where the scale needs to, where the arrow is pointing, and then I'm going to use my knowledge for each of these intervals is worth 50 grams to find out that the mass of this clay is 600 grams. So for question 1b, what is the mass of each piece of clay? Well, the first piece of clay has a mass of 20 grams. The second piece of clay has a mass of 130 grams. And the third and final piece of clay has a mass of 600 grams. So now we've finished our discovery task. Let's have a look at our thing together. And on this one we're asked, Louis is weighing some more pieces of clay for his sculpture. What is the mass of each piece of clay? So let's remember our strategy to work out what each interval is worth first, and then being able to identify what each arrow is pointing to, to identify the actual mass. You'll notice that all three of these scales have the same scales, so it should make it a little bit easier for us to identify things.
So you're going to be looking at finding the difference between two marked amounts, counting the number of intervals between those two marked amounts, and then dividing the difference between the two marked amounts by the number of intervals. So be thinking about that first one, for example, we've got 200 grams and 300 grams. What's the difference between them? How many intervals are between the 200 grams and 300 grams? Can you divide that difference between that amount by those intervals to work out what each interval is worth? And by knowing that, can you then identify what is the mass of each piece of clay? And you can see they're even highlighted on that horizontal number line to represent those scales. So once you've applied those strategies, carry on with your textbook questions and then move yourself on to the independent work in your workbook. I look forward to seeing how you get on with these different strategies. Good luck.